Control Surface Studio 2.8 is here. This release brings a complete rebuild of the user interface from scratch. We've introduced many workflow improvements which are designed to help making your Ableton scripts much more clear and easy to use. Okay, let's take a look shall we? After logging in, you'll notice a completely new layout. On the left, you'll see the current version number, the purchase status, and some user details. Then next to the logout button, the CSS menu settings is available. The settings menu is basically the same as in 2.7, but you can now manually enter file locations, as well as opening the file browser with the button on the right. We now have four new tabs. My scripts is your new home for managing MIDI remote scripts. My controller templates is where you'll find all of your controller templates. The on remoteify tab is where you can import pre-made scripts and controller templates from remoteify.io. And we also have a new tutorials tab this contains links to all of our tutorials to help you get the best out of Control Surface Studio. As in previous versions, the script building process is still split into two parts, scripts and controller templates. From the My Scripts tab, you can add or import scripts. You can duplicate scripts, delete them, and export scripts. There's also an option to open the script in the editor, which I'll show you in a minute. The My Controller Templates section pretty much has the same options, but for controller templates. Add new, import, duplicate the template, delete it, or export the template. And then there's also an option to open the controller template in the editor. You'll also notice that each controller template displays any scripts which are using it. Let's take a look at the script editor. On first glance, this will look similar to previous versions, but there are many changes. We still have a two column layout with the script manager on the left and the controller template manager on the right. We also now have the log section as an extra panel in the bottom right. Errors from Ableton Live are now displayed in red and log messages from your script, such as in reactions, are displayed in green. And we also have a MIDI message display at the bottom, which displays the last received MIDI data, as well as any connected MIDI controllers. You can also turn MIDI Learn on and off here. Let's take a look at the Script Manager in a bit more detail. Going from the top, we have a Close Editor button. We have a button to open the App Settings, which is the same as what you see here. So you can access that from two places. You can change the script name here. And then we have a button to access some extra script settings, such as writing notes about the script and changing the global feedback. We now have a save button. Auto saving has been removed in 2.8. So if I make a change to the script name, the save button lights up whenever there's a change in the script. And then you just click it and that saves the changes to the file and you'll see that it displays the file name here. If you make a change to your script and you haven't saved it, when you click the close button you'll get a message which says you have unsaved changes to your script which will be lost if you continue and you can either close and none of the changes will be saved or you can cancel and then click the save button. This big orange button is what you click to generate the script into Ableton Live. And if it is added successfully, you'll get the actual location that it is saved to. 
Below that we have the controller template menu. This is where you can select the controller template to assign to your script. You can also add a new controller template here. Below that is the mappings table. This is where all of your mappings for the script will be located. You can also see that we have a mappings and modes options. So if I click on modes, this will display all of the modes in your script. Currently we have three modes. These are automatically added to a new script whenever you create one. You can add more modes here. If I switch back to mappings and open the add a mapping menu, all of the mapping types are displayed in here and you can filter mappings. and then click any mapping type and it will open the settings form for that mapping type. Here you can add your settings for that specific mapping, including setting the mode and the controller input that you want to set it to. And then click save and that adds the mapping to your script. If I open up the add a mapping menu again and scroll down, you'll notice that the track mapping types and the device mapping types can be directly selected. And that's because we have removed the old hierarchy of needing to add track selectors, device selectors from the mapping type menu. So you can just directly add any mapping type if I add a track volume and scroll down, you can see that there's a track selection setting here, and this is what would have been the old track selector mapping type. But you can select your track options here, but now it's directly in the mapping type itself. And that's the same for device mapping types. So you have the track selection settings and then you have the device selection settings below that. Same for the device parameter. Track selection, device selection, and then the parameter itself. And now moving over to these four options in the top left of the mapping table, we have delete, duplicate, import, and export. You'll notice that these two are currently disabled. If I select some mappings, they now become active. And you can delete whatever mappings are checked. You can also duplicate the checked uh, mappings. You can also select some mappings from your script and export them to a JSON file. You can then import that JSON file directly into your script. So that makes it easy to move mappings to other scripts if that's what you need to do. You can rearrange your mappings and also filter them. The controller template manager has quite a few new features which I'll go through now. Starting from the top, you can change the controller template name. We have a save button, the same as with the script manager, and also a settings menu, which has some extra options. You then have all of the inputs, which you can add. You can then delete inputs. You can select all inputs, deselect all inputs. You can bulk edit whatever inputs are selected. So you can change the MIDI type, MIDI channel or MIDI value. You can duplicate selected inputs. And you can see a list of all of the selected inputs. You can now show and hide the grid directly from this menu and you can zoom in and out. And you can also export selected inputs 
directly to a JSON file, which you can then import into another controller template, or you can import it into the My Controller Template section as its own template. Resizing of controller inputs has now been improved. When you hover over an input, you'll see a small triangle in the bottom right corner. If you hover over that, you can then resize the input by clicking and dragging it. And also in the top right corner of each input, you'll notice a small pencil icon. Clicking that opens the settings form for the input. And also when I hover over the input, we now display the MIDI data alongside the input name. And finally for the controller template, if I come out of the script manager and go to my controller templates and then open the controller template, you can now edit the controller template by itself without the script. And all changes will be applied to any scripts which are using that template. With regards to Control Surface Studio's configuration files, version 2.7 and below will be stored in the Control Surface Studio folder in your user folder. Version 2.8 and up will use Control Surface Studio 2.8, so you can use both apps concurrently. If you want to move templates over from 2.7 to 2.8, you can either use the export functionality from 2.7 and import it into 2.8, or you can manually copy your scripts and controller templates over from 2.7 and then drop them into the controller and scripts folders in 2.8. So there you have it. Get ready for a brand new and improved Control Surface Studio experience. Thanks for watching and as always, please do leave your comments in the forum or email them to us and we read everything. Thank you.